if we buy a bond at less than face value, we're going to have to amortize that discount, the difference between what we paid and the face value over the remaining life of the bond. This is particularly true if it's available for sale security or a held to maturity security. There are some companies that say if it's a trading security, we're going to buy and sell that thing within a few days anyway, so it's a waste of time to amortize the discount. So let's look at an example of straight line amortization of that discount versus an effective interest rate amortization of the discount in the situation where we have an available for sale security. Both are trying to do the same thing. We're, in both instances, we're trying to get the discounted carrying value, if you will, up to the face value. So whether we're using the straight line method or the effective interest rate method, we're going to take a bond from the discounted price up to its face value at maturity. All right, let's assume we buy a $1,000 corporate bond out there. It has a contract rate, in other words, a face amount of 8%. That means we're going to receive 40 bucks every six months. 8% times a $1,000 face is $80. Divide that by two because bonds pay interest twice a year, and we're going to get 40 bucks every six months. Let's assume interest rates have gone up, and why would our required interest rate go up for this bond? Well, maybe interest rates in general have gone up, or maybe the credit rating of this company has gone down, and so there's more risk. So let's pretend like we require a 10% return to buy this bond. How much should we pay? Well, let's go to our financial calculator. Let's clear everything that's in the third row. We're in the third row. We're in the third row. We're in the third row. And I have this trick where I plug in the numbers first as if the contract rate, the 8%, were the same as the market rate. So we're going to get $1,000 at the end. I know that because it's right in here. We're going to get $40 every six months. I know that because it's right in here. And it's going to be 6N, 6 periods. And the interest rate, like I say, let's pretend like the market rate and the required rate are exactly the same. Put in 4% interest. Then we compute PV and we get $1,000, which is the face value. So now I know that I've got the right N, I've got the right I, I've got the right payment, I've got the right future value. So let's just fool around with the interest rate and change it. So we require a 10% return per year. That's 5% every six months. So we have 5i, then compute PV, and we learn that we should get, we should pay $949.24 to buy this bond. $1,000 minus $949.24 is $50.76 worth of discount. So we actually should also include brokerage fees, but this stuff is already complicated enough. So let's pretend like my, uh, my brother-in-law sold me the bond and he didn't charge me any brokerage fees. So under the straight line method, it's really simple. We'll take that uh, $50.76 discount, divide it by six because there's six interest payments between now and maturity of the bond. And that means we're going to amortize it $8.46 every time we receive an interest payment. So every time we get a cash payment of 40 bucks, we're going to debit cash for 40. We're going to debit debt investments available for sale for $8.46. And to make that journal entry balance, we'll need to have interest revenue of 48.46. And it kind of makes sense that our interest revenue on our books would be more than the $40 cash because we only paid $949.24 for this bond, but we're still getting paid interest at 8% per year on a $1,000 bond. So we bought this thing on sale, and we get the benefit of that sale price every six months when we book a little bit more interest expense. In this column is the carrying value of the bonds. As you can see, it goes from the 949.24 up by 846 every six months till we get to the $1,000. So the straight line method is super easy to calculate and GAAP won't let us use it. If there's a material difference between the straight line method and the effective interest rate method, we have to use the effective interest rate method. GAAP says that it produces a periodic interest expense equal to a constant percentage of the carrying value of the bonds. And so it says it matches expenses and revenues better than the straight line method. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we're still going to go from the same thing. We're still going to go from 949.24 up to 1,000. We're just going to go at a little different pace. 
we're going to take the effective rate times the carrying value of the bonds minus the contract rate times the face value and that's going to give us the amount of the amortization i for the life of me cannot remember that formula but i can remember that a journal journal entry is supposed to balance so here's the carrying value of the bonds or the book value of the bonds at the beginning of the period this $47.46 is the 0 0.05, that's the effective rate per six months, times the carrying value. So that gives us $47.46 worth of interest revenue. I know I'm getting a check for $40, bucks, debit cash for $40, credit interest revenue for $47.46. To make that journal entry balance, I have to have a debit of $7.46 to debt investments available for sale. Six months go by, and now the carrying value of the bonds at the beginning of the period is the 949.24 plus the $7.46, gives me a total of 956.70. So the interest revenue for this six month period is 0 0.05 times 956.7, which gives me 47.84. I know I'm getting cash of 40, so to make this journal entry balance, I have to debit debt investments available for sale for $7.84. Another six months goes by, the carrying value of the bonds at the beginning of the month, a six month period is the carrying value from before plus the 784 we added means that the carrying value of the bonds is now 964.54. 5 percent times that gives me the 4823. I know I'm getting 40 bucks in cash, so to make this journal entry balance, I have to debit debt investments available for sale for eight dollars and twenty three cents. So we're, we're actually doing exactly what that formula says. We're taking the effective interest rate times the carrying value of the bonds minus the contract rate times the face amount of the bonds to give us the amount of amortization. And we keep doing that pattern all the way through and sure enough we end up at a thousand dollars face value of, of the bonds and a thousand dollars carrying value of the bonds. Or if you like T-accounts and for God's sake who doesn't love T-accounts we do the same thing as we did in the straight line method. We just go at a different pace. 949.24 plus the amortization of the discount. We end up at $1,000. So the difference between the two methods is the straight line takes a total discount, divides it by the number of interest payments, and then debits the debt investments available for sale or held to maturity for that amount every time there's a uh, payment of interest. The effective interest rate method is a little bit more complicated. You take the effective rate times the carrying value of the bonds. You subtract from that the contract rate times the face value. By the way, this is the cash payment that you're going to get. And you end up with the amount of amortization. Both end up in the same place. Both get you from the original discounted amount up to the face value. So don't forget, GAP says if there's a material difference between the straight line method and the effective interest rate method, we have to use the effective instrument method. Don't forget that if it's a trading bond that you might not even bother with the discount or amortizing it because you're just buying and selling that bond within a few days. But certainly if it's available for sale or if it's a held to maturity bond, you're going to have to do some amortizing. But now you know how to do it. I hope that helps.